the um thank you okay thank you all and uh welcome um we're recording so um let me get right to my remarks uh for the board's sake we have a couple there are a couple of things that i want to apprise you all of uh, one is we approved a change of use for 11 main street you recall um uh, from uh, office to retail. Um, that's the one with the parking agreement. That's the one. Eleven Main is the one on the other side. Of the, the leather side. store. The leather store. Oh, yes. okay. Um, our approval was conditioned on uh, their going to the HDRB if they plan to. Uh, put up any exterior signage. There was none in the application that came to us. And we also approved just a change of use from commercial to retail uh, sales. Um, I have uh, been disturbed as have uh, other people and the neighbor uh, about the- Oh, that all that temper gets is a proliferation. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter to me what the condition of the sign is at the moment. The fact is that they but, did. Well, it matters to the code. Yeah. Um, so um, I brought my attention, my concern to. But it does look. It nice. looks terrible. Yeah. Um, to And it's excessive in my view, but I'm not on the HDRB. Um, also, one of the signs advertises hot dogs and we, we did not approve food service which has you know has its own requirements so i brought my concerns to the mayor and she has contacted uh, the code enforcement officer who has contacted the tenant who is doing the signs um and and inform hdrb obviously and so uh, it is possible that this may come back to us in some fashion or another. That's number one. Number two, I expect to us to receive an application for a change of boundary line connected with the sale of a small piece of property from the, the village um, to the art gallery and home that is being built, that has been built on Fair Street. And in the back of it, the impel. Yeah. Yeah. Impel lot. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is a that is a, a form of application that I have not uh, gone through before. That's, that's in the back of the property, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the um, I was just informed of this yesterday, I believe. So it's likely that uh, it will come to us at our next meeting. So. Um, I encourage everyone to uh, take a look at the sections of the codes that pertain to that kind of an application. And so that we'll be um, able to deal with it in a, in a timely fashion. Was the code changed for lot line adjustments? I don't remember. I don't know. I have not looked at the site. No, I did. I, I discussed it with him. Okay. So I don't think it requires anything, but I'll take a look. It does. Does it? Yeah, it does. Uh, so um, it is likely that the process will take us two meetings. So uh, that is um, that is um, second item. The third item is that some of you may know that there is a group information, uh, citizens group information. Uh, opposed to the Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail, and only uh, one. Well, only one that I'm that I know about, and only one that I was invited <laughs> to join, which I um, obviously did not, uh, cannot. But I did accept an invitation to address parts of the group um, with the following caveats: that there would not be uh three members of the current board in the room at the time uh, which would require uh, all of the sunshine regulations uh, number two that i did not want to discuss the organization and form and uh 
administrative issues attendant to establishing a group. And number three, that I would restrict my comments to an explanation of what this board, the board's actions to date and uh, to answer technical questions having to do with uh, the environmental problem. So I just wanted to let you know I've informed the mayor of that as well. And, um, what, is, and what is her response? Uh, <clears throat> she was aware of it, of the group. No, it's in support of participation or? She didn't. She didn't take a position. No, I just, um, the way I posed it was, uh, I don't know if you are aware of the existence of this group, but she had been made aware of it. So. So that's my report, and um, um, if I could have a move to um, um, open uh, to create the opportunity to request a vote um, if we need to modify this agenda in any way. So what did, what did you want to modify? Yeah. I don't. No, oh, you don't. I just oh. want to yeah. lay in in case we have to during the meeting. I don't anticipate that. Okay. Either. Okay. So will you second that? Sure. Okay, great. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three. Lara? Aye. 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 Nice to see you. Uh, Yaslin is away and won't be joining us on Zoom tonight. Um, Yes, and um, what's your vote on this uh, motion to? No, change. Laura, I, I say I, I said I. I. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it's four in favor, which is unanimous, of the members attending. Uh, the next, if we can move on, is the approval of the twelve twenty-two minutes. Now, Karen, I don't believe you received any comments. Uh, I. Did not. I think so. You might have had one brief one with. No, I said that it's that you were okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that was it. You, said it, you added something though, right? What from today? No, no, to the end of the minutes. Is that not? Maybe it was the agenda. Oh, no, it might have been the agenda. agenda. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I have no comments on the that. Was, yeah, that was the agenda. That's going to say when you read something. <laughs> okay. Um, my, uh, I had no, no substantive comments. There are some paragraphing issues, um, you know, uh, double spacing. And there was one small typo that I'm sure I would have gotten about. Um, so that being the case, may I have a motion to um, approve the minutes of December 22nd, uh, 2022. So moved. So moved. Okay. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Report of the members. Uh, I have a report that uh, um, uh, we met some people over the weekend, again, uh, people who are interested in looking at um, what is going on with the fjord, uh, because lots of people attended the uh, uh, meetings at uh, the, the, firehouse. Uh, the, uh, the firehouse and also at the Duchess Manor, uh, yeah. the ones we went. So there were um, different reactions, but a lot of people are interested in knowing what is going on and uh, um, I as a board member I cannot uh, comment as a board member but as a you know concerned citizen uh, I definitely uh, would be interested no, anything in we anything we do is is available to the public that's yeah that's as right, a board right. member no yeah. without question okay you know and then uh, I did say there, there that's right there that's were, the point of the sunshine public launch. yeah there were uh, public records that that you can refer to and then there are also videos i'm sorry so one. going on with respect to the the seeker process or just going on in general i or? think it's in general uh, as far as the people i met it's in general of uh, uh, as far as the trail is concerned but also there's the traffic the okay. the, the 90 traffic which is a, a, a major concern the shuttle study uh, yeah. and then um also the at least apparent uh, or seemingly no uh, no wish to uh, 
address uh, the problems that people uh, or questions that uh, raised before uh, from the viewer. They say, okay, we're, we're looking at it or, uh, well, that's yeah. still a long time. I think that's a, that's a strong reaction from uh, lots of people to say, we need to see really uh, what they intend to do or if there is anything uh, the general public uh, or concerned citizens can do. Right. Um, that's I mean, that's I, right. I've been advising everybody to, to write the local elected officials, okay. right? Because I mean, as I've said from the beginning, it's their job to figure out what the majority opinion is, right? And then fight for the majority opinion. I haven't seen any effort to find out what, you know, what the average resident wants or doesn't want, right? Obviously, uh, this is... Um, You've uh, been invited by whom? And um, What's that? <clears throat> You've been invited by whom to write? Yeah. To write? Did you just I say they even I said advise everybody to write their local oh, elected oh, officials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I think that, you know, yeah. I think you, because I haven't seen any attempt to gather the public opinion, there's been kind of these, you know, kind of non committal, un, kind of unfocused, somewhat supportive comments. And, you know, I hope they'll be transparent. I hope they'll be nice. I, I mean, hope is not much of a strategy for anything, but. Um, <laughs> what's so if they're not asking then i think people should you know should provide it to them um you know it's, that's one of the i think is that's the way it's supposed to work right you know the the local elected officials are supposed to fight for the majority opinion right since we all fund this you know this uh this enterprise and obviously anything that impacts quality of life uh as this most certainly will right i think should be you know has to be taken seriously is most likely to. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you, either of you like to comment on the meeting at the firehouse? I, I wouldn't call it a meeting. It, you yeah. know, it's form board presentations. It is. It is a. You know, look. It could be that you know. It could be a timeshare, right? I mean, it's it's your it, it. It seems quite clear to me that the the play is to have a bunch of meetings that document, and it's concerning to me, that document the current visitation problem, which then you can clearly see the, the response to that would be our, our project is the solution to this, right? Mm -hmm. That is, that is it, it, it's, it's not based in fact. I mean, the, it, the, the trailhead, the, the first part of the project that had great public support was obviously the breakneck connector. It was very easy to get support around, you know, around, you know, getting people off of 9D and not feeling like you're going to drive over a pedestrian as you go, as you head to Beacon. <clears throat> that was well supported. It is still supported. But to then tack on a linear park, you know, an eight mile linear park that is going to send a gorgeous park that is going to send all these people into dockside was not discussed, right? I, I it's, it's a little, you know, it, but it seems clear that these meetings and the meetings aren't taking the public input, they are just promoting the project, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is supported by a lot of land conservation firms, uh, you know, or concerns. I would say it's development, not land, you know, not land conservation. Um, but I think that there, there isn't a back and forth between what is the public opinion, either from the applicant side or from the village side, right? And what's supposed to be happening is you're supposed to be taking in the public opinion. Um, their, their, their focus is really that, and MJ said that when she addressed the board, it's a public park, right? It's, yes, it's a public park. Nobody's ever been denied access, right? And it has been used in a very public way. It's now being kind of very much being taken as the, as the terminus, right? To the, you know, to this, to this park. Um, and likely, the most beautiful piece of the park will be the Cold Spring leg at the, at the northern gates, right? It'll be the most farthest out in the water. So it's, it would be, logic would dictate that it's going to be busiest here, right? So I think that it would be great if these were actual meetings where they're actually taking the concerns, you know, as opposed to, you know, posters of this and that and pieces and legs. And, um, but it's not something that you would expect you know, a developer to do, but but I would I would hope that the village or the village board on behalf of the residents would fill that gap and jump in and just say, we need to understand what the residents want, right? And I, I don't see really any of that happening. And the, meet, the last two meetings that they had, 
there is no public input. The the last one that they had was only to talk. The one at the Fjord Trail at the Duchess Manor was just to talk about the visitation problem, which is which is strange to me to discuss this with the Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail, right? Because it doesn't, you know, they're they are separate issues, right? This is undoubtedly going to be a new population, right? And a and a new volume of people. So I think that you know it, it would be great to see public input requested, gathered, and and responded to. Um, uh, I have a question there. Um, it, uh, the Southside Park, um, right now labeled as the southern terminus for the trail, is it uh, um, not a condition? But was it? Uh, assumed that the state park uh whoever in charge uh would build rebuild this park in you know, with the intention that this would be the terminus or it is going to be rebuilt or something no matter what i think it speaks to the first part which is that there's not been a whole lot of sharing of information there was a large you know earth and ramp that clearly yeah, is going yeah. to go somewhere yeah. right so clearly there is engineering clearly decisions have been made mm -hmm. and clearly that extends somewhere else so it, it's a little silly to say we're not there yet well right. it, it's there it's there that, right? that, certainly the, the ramp thing was never in the in in the it's not shoreline stabilization <laughs> exactly exactly I, I think that inferences about the the true purpose of the dockside park improvements uh, <clears throat> or modifications inferences can be drawn by the contract that the village entered into with the parks department in which in broad terms um, the the um, parks department was deemed responsible for the capital improvements and that, that in, in land use and improvement is just change um <clears throat> the capital improvement uh at which point <clears throat> upon their completion and i believe that the village was only required to receive two days notice when the project would begin and i believe that's what they <laughs> they received was <clears throat> two days notice uh the contract then goes on to establish a period of 10 years um, in which the village of Cold Spring is the licensee of the um, of the park and takes on the maintenance and insurance responsibilities for that 10 year period, uh, but also is granted um, the authority to receive revenue from events that it may or may not choose. Yeah, that fall under the within the terms of the yes. license agreement uh, to hold it. But um, the entire that, agreement is can be terminated with 30 days notice on either party. On either party. Yeah. Um, at the end of the 10 years, the property reverts, the park reverts, unless there is an extension of the agreement, reverts to the parks department. And one can infer that at that point, it would be transferred to Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail. At Sorry. the end of the term, yeah. but that's not what they said. Even the Fjord Trail said that once the minute they need to do work, they'll issue the 30 day notice and the contract will yes, and the licensee I, agreement will be terminated. Nobody's waiting for 10 years. Well, it's seven years now, and I'm not so sure that their time frame um, conforms to the reality of the time. Frame. Yeah, no, I don't know that. But what yeah. they but they were very clear and when they met with us was, you know, when they are ready, it's the 30 day notice goes in and they start the work. That's correct. Yeah. Again, the presumption is that that will kick in prior to the to 2028. Um, so I am. I am skeptical that the uh, subsequent pieces of this project south of Breakneck um, are going to be uh, ready to go at, uh, before 2028, if by then. But nevertheless, um, so you mean just the connector, the um, Breakneck connector up to the trailhead? 
Yeah, I mean anything south of that portion, anything south of the portion that's under construction now. Um, so that's the situation, basically. And so it is a flexible management agreement, licensing agreement that can be used in various ways to shift um, the management responsibility of Dockside Park. Um, so, all right, uh, with no further comments, do you all have any questions? Uh, a comment or a question? A comment or a question? Mm -hmm. well, a comment, please. Um, yeah, um, my name is Andrew Hall. I live on Fair Street. Mm -hmm. And I was at the meeting on, on Thursday, mm -hmm. and that spiked my concern um, about the nature as currently envisaged of the Ford Fuel Trail. So my question to you, the board, is um, what's your purview and jurisdiction within the village as regards the trail? Um, well, I would be happy to explain that to you in detail, yeah. um, but I think it deserves longer time than we have mm -hmm. tonight. Generally, if you go to the village code, which is not difficult to read or difficult to find, you will find in one paragraph what the responsibilities of the planning board are. And in general, they are to preserve the uh, integrity of the planning process in the village of Cold Spring, to uh, have a care toward the health and safety of its citizens, and to um, health and safety, and to protect the character the quality of life here. Those are the general missions. We can do that through a variety of ways, which includes reviews of change of use and and uh, uh, changes to property mappings and approval of um, um, what do they call? It? What is what are Subdivisions. Subdivisions. Okay. So that's it generally. In terms of this project, we don't know yet whether it will actually come before this board as an application in some way or not. And uh, until we know that, uh, we can't issue a formal position. Mm -hmm. We can ask probing questions. We can keep asking them. We can be persistently interested in both the quality or lack of quality of the answers. Um, we can confer with the public, but our mission at this point is to shed light. Yeah. Um, and so we have, I think, been trying um, responsibly to do that since this project was first unveiled in this iteration. Um, so uh, if you would like to come back, uh, and we'll put it on the agenda and we can have an in-depth conversation. Okay. Um, okay, so let us move on. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Who are you? Dave Moran, yes. the Academy Street. Uh, a couple of things of clarification. The uh, restabilization at the waterfront was planned for years and they gave us more than one day or two days notice. That was, they kept, I was in the loop all the time that I was mayor. I don't know if they followed up when they were started, but everything was in place and they, they kept us apprised of what was going on, whether or not in their minds back five years, whenever this started, they, this was going to work out as planned, or maybe they implemented it at a time where we would have, that'll work out with the fjord. I'm not sure, but um, it seems that way. Um, the ramp as you, as you, uh, it's obvious it was not part of that plan, and I don't know how you just don't get a you can just do that. But uh, obviously they were working. Somebody built that, and uh, from our taxpayer dollars. Um, so I just want to clear that up. Um, as far as the lease goes that we have, that's pretty much just a a non lease lease or contract uh, that anyone can you know cancel at any time, pretty much. And it was put in place basically so that we wouldn't have to go through the state every time and get permission from them to do any event that we wanted. So that was basically it. And uh, so it's really not a non, uh, they can do what they want. And uh, Exactly. So, uh, and, when, and when that agreement goes away, then our use, our use of that park would have to go through parks. Uh, through parks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's very different. So, yeah. Or whoever manages. 
Uh, the only thing I, I'd like to ask is uh, that, that you keep, uh, I, I would ask that you do a formal letter from the board to the mayor and to their board saying that it would be, I think, beneficial to the whole village and their responsibility to take a stand on this. I, I thought we did, didn't we? Um, wasn't it the first letter we sent? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. uh, if you feel that that message needs to be um, reaffirmed, uh, then we'll take that under consideration. And last thing is, I, I know you're pushing for them to uh, actually follow the, the, the rules of all other uh, developers, and I, uh, I'm i glad to see that, and I hope you keep that up, and I believe they should at the very least, and I know you're pushing for this too, is have an escrow account and have us be able to hire our own uh, person <laughs> own professionals. So um, thank you for... Uh, bringing it kind of to the attention of everyone and hopefully you'll keep going and pushing for it because that's what's really needed. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. I also wanted to just say that this is the first time I've heard from an official body in Cold Spring of anything about the Fewer Trail. So I'm really happy to have heard that. And I was one of the first people to be videotaping up and down 9D to try and gather information about how many people were stopping traffic, how the parking was. And this was probably 12 years ago or so. And um, it was never the intention for the Fjord Trail to be built off of that information. It was simply to try and get the road clear so that people wouldn't get killed. And um, at the time, the first Fjord meeting I went to, Fjord Trail meeting, we were talking about joining trails that already existed not this huge infrastructure. And so at this point in time, when I try and imagine, like if I was a, a user of the trail, because I was for it for a while. <laughs> anyway, if I was a user and coming up from the city, the first place I'd come to would be Cold Spring because that's supposed to be the, the southernmost point. Now, if it was Garrison as well, then we'd be getting off the train at several points, but right now it's Cold Spring. So um, I imagine myself getting off the train. Where's the bathroom? If I'm going to start the hike, and it's like over a mile to the first stop, where's the bathroom? So I'm imagining Dockside becoming a latrine, and that's not really something I want to look forward to in my village. And also I try and imagine just driving and coming down Main Street and then seeing oh, okay, if we can get to Main Street, right now it's traffic's backed up already. And I imagine what new group of people would come rather than just hikers, there are gonna be people who wanna stroll. And so you're gonna get a whole new group, but every time we have a peak season of anything, that group will increase too. It's not as though it's gonna be a different season. So um, all in all, I see myself in a car trying to get to Main Street, coming down Main Street, and then being looped back in one direction or another. But in any direction we go, we have more traffic, more looping. Plus then you add the boats coming in <laughs> and all the pedestrians walking back and forth. And it just is very frightening. It Thank doesn't you. seem like we could, our infrastructure can really contain it. So we have to have very careful planning. Thank you for your comment. Can you identify yourself? Um, I'm Peel. And um, your address is that 23 just? Fair Street. Thank and you. so we actually see the traffic as is yeah. very clearly right now. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. My name is Jeff Robbins. I'm at 2058 Route 90. And in you know full disclosure, we are on the village line, but on the outside of it. <laughs> so we're not members of the village, we're, but we're mem members of the community. Uh, I'm also, you know, very concerned about the way that this project is blown up in, in ways that both from a process standpoint seem inappropriate and from a substantive perspective raise a lot of concerns, minor, particularly the, 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 you know, the traffic along Route 9D and how that's sustainable for the kind of visitation we're talking about. But I just wanted to say, you know, Appreciate your <clears throat> positioning the board as a you know information conduit. I I'm not a 
you know, a, a planner. I'm a, I'm an attorney. I work in New York City, and I find the process and and the way to get involved and you know make voices heard kind of complicated. So I do appreciate you know your efforts to kind of make you know, provide transparency, which is ask you know encourage you all to keep. Well, thank that. you, thank you very much. It's always good to get positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, let me also say that well, any. Any of you and any of your friends and any of their friends, as long as they are in the village, um, are free to write to this board. And it does not have to be a complicated letter. But the more feedback, and once it becomes correspondence to us, then we must respond to it. Okay. We must recognize it. All right? we, we, we will not be able necessarily to answer every question. But we will recognize your the time that you put into sending your concerns to us. And it is feedback for us that we can then use to guide our steps as we move forward. So um, please feel free. As I say, it does not have to be long, complicated, um, but it is important. How, yeah. how specifically should that be framed as? As regards the dear uh, chairman, um, I'm writing to you I mean, substantively in terms of content or issues raised. Yes, or... I'm saying, dear yeah. chairman, I'm writing to you uh, to let you know that I have serious concerns uh, developing over, or no concerns developing over the this project as I learn more about it, and I um, would urge you and your fellow board members to keep this front and center, mm -hmm. front burner, or to forget about it, mm -hmm. uh, depending on your point of view. Uh, <clears throat> because people who support the project are also free to contact us. Yeah. Quick question. Um, uh, our attorney, uh, where is he in the loop? And have you had conversations with him? I know that would be confidential a bit, but I mean, is there he contact is. with him? Has there been? Yes. But the planning board does not have an application. Planning board is not right. authorized to act on anything without an application other than an advisory capacity. So I would urge you to reach out to the village board, who, if they believe they can look, the way you look at these things is using your comprehensive plan and your, um, unfortunately, because of the delays in Chapter 132, we have a local waterfront revitalization strategy and not a plan. But those, you know, it, the village board can engage attorneys, can incur expense, can, you know, can take action, right? The planning board has an advisory capacity, but we're just talking, right? So yeah, it's great to hear the input and, and Jack's doing a lot of work to get them to the table, but it would be just as helpful and probably a little bit more expedient um, to the extent that you get the village board, uh, who is the legislative body, Right to really kind of look at this. Um, I think Jack's doing an amazing job, really getting them to the table. And and there's a letter that will that will help a bit, hopefully, well. Um, but there we are. We are all servants of the code and our authority under that code. Well, uh, the actually, attorney under these circumstances has, has he given direction to? Like I'm sure you must have asked, how do we get them to the? Uh, how do we get I, them to? I, the, I, is that I, possible? I, I, well, I think. What's that? I think it's possible. And I have some proven experience in 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 similar situations, which were equally on the face of them unbalanced. Um, I've been invited to and am regularly invited to meetings um, that include the mayor and the attorney to discuss areas of mutual concern. Um, we respect the, the divisions that are required between the two boards, but we also respect uh, the extent to which we can uh, work together. So the attorney is deeply involved in this and is advising the mayor. Um, I tend to take a different approach from a lot of people on handling problems. Uh, and so I advise the, the mayor and uh, the, the attorney 
of what I'm doing. Uh, but I do, I am less intimidated by the imbalance that appears on the surface to exist between the project and the village, uh, because I think that we have we have the citizens' authority to question government. Uh, and I'm talking now about the State Parks Department and their and their sponsor of this project. So um, Matt is absolutely correct that um, expressing your opinion as a voter in the village of Cold Spring to the village board is very important. I, I want to hear it as well. Uh, from my perspective, um, it's, it's, it's important to me as well. So there's plenty of work to be done uh, with this situation. And um, it will take work. This, it, this is not an inconsequential uh, process that we're, that we're entering into. So, um, Jack, did you want to uh, take any questions? Oh. Me? I'm sorry for the people online. Do you? Oh, never mind. It, it's like it's 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 just an observation, and it's it's probably an aside. My name is David May. DG May is my wife Doris. <laughs> we've been, we've been in Cold Spring as we can for 15 years. We live on uh, 16 Morris Avenue, which is the stone house on the corner of Craigside. Yeah. And um, I think this going by, and I guess. It was sort of a call to action when I went to the meeting because the other night, and I guess the the point I was going to make was I, I was I was I don't know sense I was just I was flabbergasted at at you know at, at the business about the traffic and how this is the choke point and you know you have this totally landlocked park you know that you can't get there this way this way this way possibly from the north, but. So I zoomed over to the people who seem to be the traffic consultants. Mm -hmm. And the fellow who I spoke to first, they were so disengaged, they had never been here. He was he's from northern Vermont. And 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 I said, How did you, you know, and he was talking about the possibility, he was the trolley guy, and he was talking about like having a trolley lane up up 9D. And I'm oh, you know, but I just said, like, how do you, you know. He'd never been here. And, and, and I was just, I said, how do you get the job? Because apparently he hired the guy next to him as a sub consultant, Dan, who was about parking or something like, or the shuttle. And I'm thinking, who are these people that don't have any idea? You know, it was consistent with the soap job that I thought, you know, like you have this whole map. And when you get to 9D, it kind of, it kind of tails off into the shadows, like the whole way of getting here, you know, just dis, dis, disappeared, like it, you know, in light in light tones. So, and the other guy didn't know anything either. He was from Westchester, but but he he I said, how do you how are you hired? And he said they put out a bid, and and he won the bid. And it's like, what's the credential? Like, is it a, you know, like what is the so? I guess you, you probably know this, but it was, I, I guess it was, I don't know, I'm an architect, I'm a technician, you know, by nature, I can, you know, I can dig into zoning and codes and stuff like that, but I haven't here. Um, I'm in the city, you know, but I was just astounded. And what we're, what you're up against, what we're up against is finding is what you're doing is finding a voice, you know, getting a voice and figuring out what the power structure is and how to attack it, because I suspect uh, common sense might not work, but the fact that they don't seem to be following any kind of protocol would leave them open to, you know, some kind um, of, and I mean, anyway, you guys know way more about it, but I just wanted to, no, I, I'm just, uh, I just wanted you're, to, just, you're raising a lot of issues, uh, many of them, you know, the issues of how and who becomes hired as a consultant is, Basically, because the Fjord Trail is a non-governmental organization, it is not required to disclose any of that. We need a consultant. We need an attorney to hammer it. We need a consultant. <laughs> so, well, um, we all need advocacy. We we have the village attorney to okay. to advise us Thank here. Thank you for what you're doing. And yeah, uh, anyone online want to? 
comment, Doris? <laughs> Nobody has a hand up or anything, right? No, no, no. Okay. Um, I'm, this is, uh, I'm just zooming in. I'm just going to piggyback on to David Mays. My husband's Jeff. Um, David Mays comments on talking to the consultants. I was also there at the ocean, the open house and the traffic consultant, he basically was kind of giving me a, a whole spiel. And then when he realized I wasn't actually in the village, but I was on 9D, he kind of made a joke and said, oh, I've got to give you, you know, never mind that, I'll tell you something else. And I, you know, he made a joke, but it, it basically feels like that, that they were just trying to give us a snow job, you know, and just basically play, placate whoever they were talking to. It, it really, there was no answer to the congestion that was envisioned with all the parking spaces that are proposed in this plan and the skinny one lane in each way uh, corridor that we're talking about. And, and thank you again, everyone's, you know, feeling very appreciative. I think that we are able to talk to someone who, you know, maybe can help us help guide this process to uh, voice our, our concerns. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh. If we can move on, we have no correspondence in to discuss, but getting to item number six, which is the Hudson Highland Fjord Trail, to explain to the um, members of the public here, um, I was um, given authority by my fellow mo board members uh, to draft a letter that reflected uh, what I considered was the next step this board should take. And this is based on uh, some knowledge that I received about the dynamic um, uh, at the project. And um, and so, um, and, and I guess it was a Dave who was talking about the importance of the villages having its own resources. Um, one of the issues that this board has uh, tried to focus on is the growing issue of over tourism. And uh, this is a phenomenon that is now occurring around the world where um, tourist friendly places are now being overwhelmed by tourism, uh, by out of control tourism, and the environmental degradation, both the physical and the natural degradation of those environments as a, a result of over-tourism. And it runs everything from property values to uh, unsustainable demands on the water table to all sorts of profound issues. Um, and early on, this board raised that concern with the um, Fjord Trail and um, did not receive much engagement on it. Um, I think the time is right to, to, um, to, to raise it again because in fact, they have announced that they are hiring a team of tourism consultants to look at the issue of increased visitation. They have not used the word over tourism. Um, and so, because we know that, they've announced it, um, the letter I am proposing that the board send, uh, and this is a draft that I circulated previously, um, but will be, I will read into the record so you all can hear it. Um, and it's addressed to uh, Ms. Amy Casala, Executive Director, Hudson Island, Georgia. Uh, Dear Amy, I am writing to open a dialogue regarding the management options of the increased tourism that will result from the Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail. As you know, it is our view that the, uh, that the Fjord Trail should be required to provide the village of Cold Spring with funds to engage independent legal and environmental consultants answerable solely to the village. The scale and complexity of the project and the disparity between the uh, Fjord Trail's resources and the villages 
warrant this as the best guarantee that the fundamental interests of both parties are balanced. That said, the planning board is encouraged by the Fuel Trail's commitment to hire consultants to address the tourism issue. The scope of your analysis and its strategic effectiveness are vitally important to us. We also believe that whatever measures you intend to take must be implemented well in advance of the completion of the breakneck ridge phase of the project in 2025. The planning board would like to host a meeting to begin discussions either at one of our regularly scheduled meetings on the second and fourth Thursday in March or April, or a special meeting on a mutually agreeable date. If a pre-meeting to discuss the details makes sense, I and another member of the board will make ourselves available. We would also welcome Ned Sullivan's thoughts, and I am therefore including him in this correspondence. I look forward to your response. Sincerely, Jack Goldstein. Um, Ned Sullivan, for those of you who may or may not know, is on the board of directors of Scenic Hudson, which is the parent organization for this project. And he is also the paid executive director of it. And one of the concerns we've noted, and certainly has been striking to me, is that uh, I have never actually been part of the review of a project of this size in which the principal decision makers were not part of the public engagement. Do you know? Uh, never in my experience. And, and um, I think that it is important to change that. I don't believe necessarily that uh, Ms. Casala or MJ Martin are decision makers necessarily. Um, and I believe that the decision makers have got to get involved in the public debate. So, um, so that's the letter. I would enjoy hearing from my fellow board members whether they are comfortable with it being sent. Yeah, so in the response from the, 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 this letter is in response to mm -hmm. it. We asked, it, I'm not sure if there was a play on language, if we were an involved agency, and she responded that we are involved without the word agency. Uh, is that intentional or? I don't think so. Okay. So, I mean, I think that it might be helpful to just add that, you know, as an involved agency, right? That the reason we expect them to you know to pay for these consultants is because it's a review of a project you know absent an application but certainly understanding that you know that this is you know it's really the state reviewing the states the states both the applicant as well as the lead agency okay. um you know when you have you know oftentimes when you put boxes and charges to hen houses things come out differently so i mean i think that if I, I think if, if you think it's correct, I'm not sure, but if you if that's your read of the letter, I think it would say as an, I would say as an involved agency, right? As the village as an involved agency and the planning board of that aid, you know, of that village, of that entity. I will I that will, we think you you should pay, yeah. right? And that's because, you know. And that, by the way, for the for the members of the public, um, there is a precedent for uh, apt for applicants for a major project to pay for an, another an, a, another body's uh, defense of its um, interests. Um, and it has occurred in the Hudson Valley before. So uh, it's not as if we're asking for something which is but, out of the ordinary. Okay. And it's well supported in our code. I mean, you, they, to get your applicant application reviewed, yeah, you know, you open up an escrow account. That escrow account can use paper consultants. Butterfield, there were a lot of consultants working on Butterfield because it was a large development. So, um, comments? No comments. I think I think again, in general, I agree with the letter. I think yeah. it's good. Thank you, um, Lara. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a pretty straightforward request, and I think it's well warranted. So, agreed. Thank you. Then, if, uh, if I could have a resolution, please, from the members of the board 
authorizing me to finalize the language. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Then I will work with Karen um, to finalize the language and put it on uh, our board stationery um, and get it off as soon as possible. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, new business. We have none. Public comment. I did jigger the uh, agenda so that you all could speak earlier on. I do not think we have any board business uh, to conduct. And so, uh, barring any further questions, if I could have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. 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 And um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. So, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Write your elected officials, town and village, please. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 get involved in this. Yes. You know, there are many ways and they don't.